I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus. Our scripture reading is from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The congregation at Ephesus received the greatest compliment a, a church can receive. Someone had heard of their faith in Jesus. Word had gone out about them in such a way that their church was described by Mother Teresa almost 2,000 years later in this way. When you know how much God is in love with you, then you can only live your life radiating that love. When you know how much God is in love with you, you can only live your life radiating that love. That's how churches hear of our faith in Jesus. That's how people hear of our faith in Jesus. The church at Ephesus was a radiating presence of God's love. Word had gotten out about them as they were in ministry doing the three things that all churches are called to do. First was to extend God's love toward all the saints. Second was to live in the hope of being called by Jesus. And the third was to believe in God's resurrecting power of Jesus. Extending God's love, living the hope of God's calling, believing in God's resurrecting power. That's how faith in Jesus is heard. That's how word gets out about congregations where it gets out about churches like North Central Church of Christ in Flint, Michigan, which in 2016, not a large congregation, but still a congregation that responded to the needs of the community when the drinking water had become poisonous. And they responded by providing over 300,000 bottles of water at no charge, a way of extending out extending God's love toward all the saints. One of their members who responded to questions about their ministry had this to say, we are the only Bible that people see. Where it gets out about churches that seek to be reflections of God's love, about churches that live in the hope of being called by God as they are defined by the Greek word for church, ekklesia, which means a called out assembly. Churches are called out like Abraham and Sarah were, called to live into a future they have not yet lived, responding to the present in ways they have not yet responded, hoping, called apart, called toward a future that is different from the past. Congregations are called to live in the faith of Abraham and Sarah, adventurers in faith, as they seek to follow God's calling, to be called out followers of Jesus. Pablo Diaz defines the call of congregations to be called out followers of Jesus by stating this, God loves us for all our faults and imperfections. Once we truly know that, our lives can change. Word gets out about churches that believe in the immeasurable power that raised Jesus from the tomb and that that power of God is at work in the life of their congregations, causing the resurrected presence of Jesus to be, to be known. 
word gets out about churches that believe Jesus, who in the words of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 23 state, is the fullness of him who fills all in all. The first church that Bishop Will Willimon served for one year as a student, a uh, licensed local pastor, was a church in, in rural Georgia. He was there for one year, and when he arrived to the church for the first time, he was surprised to see that the front doors of the church were chained and padlocked. Not a sight he was expecting to see. And so he found someone who was associated with the church and asked what had happened. Why were the doors to the church chained and padlocked? He was told that things got out of hand at the board meeting the prior month. It got bad. People started ripping up carpet and taking up pews they had given in memory of their mothers. It got so bad that the police were called and the sheriff came and put that chain and padlocks on the front door of the front doors of the church until the new preacher could come and settle things down. Willemon reports that what he had been told about the church and the reason for its having its doors locked and padlocked, or chained and padlocked together was pretty much an accurate description of his first year or first and only year at that church. He would drive in rural Georgia in August praying for snow so that he would not have to be present at the church. He states there were arguments, disagreements, fights, and after serving through the congregation for a year, he moved on. A few years later, Willimon was at a conference where a young minister came up to him and introduced himself and told Willimon that he was the pastor of the church where Willimon had spent one year, the church that had been padlocked. Willimon states his heart went out to this young minister, so young and so vulnerable. The minister, after a few moments of conversation, told Willimon, you know, they still remember you there. To which Willimon replied, yeah, I'll never forget them either. Remarkable bunch of people, the young minister said. Well, that's one way of putting it, said Willimon. Then the minister continued, the free daycare center is going great. The food pantry is wonderful. Not too many interracial congregations in this part of the world. What a great place to be for my first church. Willimon states he could hardly believe what he was hearing. And he asked the minister, what happened? To which the minister says, well, I'm not exactly sure. It's just that one Sunday when worship was done and we were on our way out, we knew that Jesus loved us and had plans for us. Things pretty much took off after that. Friends, what I would submit to you is, is that the resurrecting power of Jesus became part of that congregation's experience. Things pretty much take off after we meet the risen Christ. The Ephesians received the greatest compliment a church could hear, could receive, People had heard of their faith in the Lord Jesus. We do that when we extend God's love toward all the saints, when we live in the hope of being called by Jesus, and when we believe in God's resurrecting power. As Fort Hill United Methodist Church proclaims this message, it's my prayer the things will pretty much take off as people hear of our faith in the Lord Jesus.
Let us pray. God, we pray for your resurrecting power as we seek to live and to extend your love toward all the saints as we live in the call of Jesus and as we witness to the power of, res of the resurrection. Grant to us, O oh God, your people, that we might follow Jesus this day. In the name of the Son, our Lord and Savior, your Son, Jesus. Amen. Friends, may God bless you as people hear of your faith in Jesus. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen.